Welcome back to another example for Chapter 4, Force Problems. This is one of several different examples where we have two objects tied together. So we want to make sure that we see in a new and different way how to handle these. Just like the first time that we had one of this, we look at the real picture, but the other important thing to recognize is we always want to draw free body diagrams in this chapter, and with two objects, we want two different free body diagrams. So we have the free body diagram of the three kilogram block and the free body diagram of the five kilogram block. All right, so for the three kilogram block, the first thing that we have is gravity. Gravity is always acting straight down when we're here on the surface of Earth, and it's mass times the acceleration of gravity. Because it's the three kilogram block, it's three times 9.8, or 29.4 newtons. We also have a um, table, so not really drawn in, but hopefully obvious enough for these to be accelerating sideways and not just dropping. There is a table here. So we have the normal force straight up and down. We also have the rope attached on this side of the block, pulling it forward. So that tension force we have here. And for this particular block, we are pulling to the right. So it's acceleration points to the right. All right, let's think about the five kilogram block. So it also has gravity acting on it. So just as before, gravity pulls straight down on the surface of Earth. And we have 5 times 9.8, which is 49 newtons. We have the table, a normal force here. And we realize that we have a force at an angle. So we need to break that up into components. Maybe that happens right away. Maybe that happens when we get to it. And the angled force points more to the right than it does to the left, and it points more up than it does down. So we want to kind of feel comfortable that these are the two components of that angled force. When we draw it into our free body diagram, this might be our pull force of 45 newtons. Notice we're not pulling on the three kilogram block. That didn't go in over here. But we are going to have this 40 degree angle to deal with. So we have the x component. The x component of this is 45 cosine 40 degrees because the angle is right here adjacent to it. And the y component, Fy, is going to be 45 sine 40 degrees because it's far away from the angle. And then the last thing that we haven't dealt with yet is the rope is attached back here. If we cut the rope, this thing would be able to move faster. So the rope is actually providing a tension force that is slowing it down. And in this case, we still have the acceleration pointing to the right, which will continue to be our positive direction for that object as well. Now, the big reason why we draw two separate free body diagrams is because we need to write down two separate equations. So to make sure that we recognize that the force diagrams, the free body diagrams here, are really all we need for the problem, I'm going to scroll down and have them be the only setup that we see left over here. All right, so for the three kilogram block, we're trying to write the force diagram that is in the direction of motion. In this case, the direction of motion is to the right, and so we're going to use the x equation. So F net x equals m a x. The only force that we have pointing in the horizontal direction here is tension. So we have tension equals 3 times our unknown a. We have two unknowns here, so we have to wait and come over to the other diagram. This one is also moving to the right horizontally, so it will also use the x equation. But this time we've got two forces that point in that horizontal direction. 
The force that is in the direction of acceleration if, is Fx, and the force that is opposite the direction of acceleration is Ft. 5 kilograms comes here, and then our unknown A. We can do one more step before we um, pause momentarily. And I'm going to go ahead and get the number value for this 45 cosine 40 degrees. 34.5 newtons. So we have 34.5 minus our tension equals 5A. This is a second equation that has the same two unknowns. So this is our system of equations. Now we talked the first time that this came up how to solve the system of equations. In math in general, we can solve for one of our unknowns and su use substitution. In all of our chapter four problems where this system of equations shows up, the easiest thing to do is for us to write both equations, one on top of each other, and add the equations together. So the way that that works is we write them one on top of the other, and then we add everything on the left side, so 34.5 minus tension plus tension, and then separately we add everything on the right, we have 3a plus 5a. The reason why this is always going to be useful for the way in which this system of equations shows up in chapter 5 is tension is going to show up positive once and negative once because it's two sides of the same rope. It's the same rope, the same tension, but one of the edges is pulling the block forward and one of the edges of the rope is pulling the block backwards. So we get 34.5 equals, and then 3A three pl three plus 5A is 8A. If we divide both sides by 8, then we get that the acceleration is 4.3 meters per second squared. So this is one of our final, final answers to the problem. The other thing that we are asked to do is to find the tension. So we can just plug this back into one of our unknown equations. And we might as well choose the one that's already got tension solved for all by itself. So 3 times 4.3, we're going to get 12.9 newtons, or 13 newtons. And that's the tension in the rope. On both sides of the same rope is this total amount of tension. So the key thing I want us to make sure we understand is drawing the free body diagram is the core most important part of any chapter four or chapter five problem. If we spend the time to draw it correctly, then we have basically created a map for ourselves of the entire problem and then every problem just writes down a force equation, plugs the stuff in based on our map, and then solves for the thing that we're looking for. There are no extra tricks here. If we've figured out how to draw all our forces and handle what direction all these arrows point, then that is the key part of the problem. We'll see plenty more examples in this chapter, so I will see you in those other videos.